Oh, what's up, everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. We're here at uh, the GigaOM Mobilize conference. You don't care about that. What you care about is the Motorola Android launch event just happened. Their first phone is going to be called Click. It's going to hit T-Mobile USA later this fall, and we got a little hands-on demo of it. So enough of me. Let's check out the phone. Hey, how's it going? So the black one you said, or the white one? The blue one? I'm sorry? For video, the, the, black, the black one. one. Okay. Does the uh, Motorola logo ever light up? The logo doesn't ever light up. The, the which doesn't light up? The logo? Uh, the logo on the back lights up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can either you or I click through some of the interface? Sure. So, um, let me drop one of these other ones here. So what Sanjay was showing, is that okay? <laughs> Just have to make sure I'm doing PR approved here. Um, so what Sanjay was showing you was a couple of the different widgets on the screen. So for example, uh, this is the happening screen. So it's pulling in data from uh, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, um, I can pan through and see a variety of different postings or uploaded photos, comments. If I want to focus in on any one of them, I can go in, see more information about the profile. I can post a message directly to that user. Um, I can show you the contacts. So one of the things we were showing was the uh, integrated contact view. So this is my contact, but. You have uh, you know, the phone numbers and the email addresses. It's aggregating from a number of different sources. It's doing matching to try to dedupe and connect the records. Those... Or you can physically link the records. So if it sees, if I, if I see two of my contacts that have similar attributes, I can physically connect them myself or it will try to automatically do it as Is well. Is that dummy info or, or? This is dummy info, okay. yes. Yeah, don't call that number. <laughs> Don't call that phone number, Don't Christy's not home. Yeah, that's right. Um, here you can see the messages view. So again, it's a, a similar sort of flip view across messages that are coming into a variety of different inboxes. Uh, this could be Exchange. We've done integration with ActiveSync. It could be Facebook. It could be MySpace. Um, as we said, there's multiple panels that you can scroll across. So I have my music player. Uh, my calendar can show information from both Google Calendar, Exchange Calendar. So if I look at today, uh, maybe not such a busy day. Oh. <laughs> um, what else do we have on here? The screen is resistive touch or capacitive? Uh, capacitive touch. Okay. Is it multi-touch enabled or will it be? By that, do you mean is it supporting gestures? Yeah. Yes. And, and multiple, you know, pinching and zooming. And that um, not pinching and zooming at this point. Um, there's a photo gallery, or this is more just a picture frame widget that goes into photos from my photo gallery. Um, Google Search, obviously, we have all of the Google applications. Um, on the T-Mobile version, we have MyFaves. Um, Android Market, which is just the traditional market. So we've spent a ton of time working with the ecosystem to make sure that this our Moto Dev developer community, as well as Android's developer community, can target all of the Motorola devices. Sorry, I hadn't launched this yet this morning, so. All right. Um, this is the news feed service, so you can select a variety of different channels. Anything that's an RSS feed, essentially, can be aggregated, so we've got entertainment channels, news channels. Um, I believe on this one I have some international news channels as well. There should be some Chinese feeds, obviously Canadian feeds, I'm Canadian. Um, localized for multiple languages. And we offer different bundles of channels and data streams as well as it's completely customizable. Pretty much anything that's pushing RSS would be accessible via the service. How, how much, if any of this, is T-Mobile specific customized content? versus, they mentioned the Dext phone that'll launch internationally. 
would be the same uh, experience. One of the great things about Blur is that it is um, customizable for different content feeds and streams depending on what region we're going into. So, you know, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter are very popular brands here with, with North America. It may be different uh, channels for different international markets. The Blur service as a whole is, is, is a predominantly consistent framework that will go across this, you know, this family of devices. Back on. Can we see it from the back? The phone? Sure. Um. The two different uh, colors have different, uh, I'll show you the winter white one as well, have different back panels on them. A little fun fact about this one was it started out as Morse code for Friday nights. After we ran into some space constraints and other things, I don't pretty sure in Morse code it doesn't mean much of anything at this point in time. Um, but it kind of speaks to the fun and the, the target demographic that are likely going to be using a lot of these channels and a lot of these content. And good, can we see that one with the keyboard up? Uh, sure. When my husband stops calling me. <laughs> I told you this was my actual device. Um, that's the one with the keyboard open. And is the uh, LED in the in the home screen button customizable? Can you make any changes to how it behaves or the colors that it uses? The colors that, that it uses where? Oh, for uh, the, the LED screen. light, you mean? Oh, no, yes. no. I'm um, not in this instance. These okay. products, it's consistent. So the feeds are the same. And these are all widgets, right? right. They're standard Google widgets. I can throw them away. Um, if I went to an empty screen, I could add a new one. There's a variety of stock widgets here that I could choose from. Okay. Hey, after watching this video, check out the new PhoneDog.com homepage and play the OnePod Bandit for your chance to win free phones.